Today we're going to talk about the critical role of ultra-processed foods and how they've been impacting obesity, particularly amongst the youth. And it's coming right up. Obesity has been rising a lot in America, not only in adults, but also in youth. And one of the things that has not been talked about a lot is the role of processed foods uh, in its genesis. It can be defined as formulations, mostly of cheap industrial sources of dietary energy and nutrients, plus additives using a series of processes. And there's a few things to focus on here. First is that these sources are usually cheap and they're usually industrial. So whether you're looking at carbohydrates, fats, or proteins, they tend to be the lowest quality and the easiest to manufacture at scale. That makes them cheap and therefore profitable. Also, the thing is to focus on the additives and the fact that there's a series of processes. So you're moving away from natural foods the way they appear in nature. The reason this is important is that our bodies have evolved to eat natural foods. These are the foods that we've eaten for thousands of years and therefore we've adapted to natural carbohydrates, natural fats, proteins like meat, and we know how much we should eat to stay healthy. When we start processing that, we interfere with our body's ability to know how much to eat and when we should stop eating. For example, if you use uh, wheat berry and process it into flour, you remove certain things. You remove the fats that are naturally found in that. And that's because they tend to go rancid and therefore reduce shelf life. You also reduce a lot of the fiber from going from whole grains to white bread. And you remove the proteins that are naturally found there. And you're left with a pure carbohydrate. Our body doesn't know what to do with it because it's not a natural food. So therefore, we can very easily overeat that. Then you have the additives such as the sugar, which are going to make us want to eat more and more than we really should in order to maintain a healthy weight. Most diets understand that you really should eat whole foods. The paleo diet, for example, was based on eating things that are as close to what was found during the caveman days as possible. The ketogenic diet um, is a high fat diet, but one of the things that was very important was that you should eat whole foods. A plant-based diet is not that healthy if you're just eating chocolates and pizza, but now people talk about a whole food plant-based diet because you wanna eat things close to nature. When you do that, then your body knows how much to eat, how much to not to eat, and naturally maintains a healthy weight. And that's the secret of how people really maintain their weight without really counting calories or even watching what they were eating up until the 70s. By the 1970s, the diet industry really got going. The, the Dietary Guidelines of America in 1977 recommended a low-fat diet. The problem with the low-fat diet was that when you took out all the fat from these natural foods, it didn't taste very good and people didn't like them. So the government encouraged companies to develop these processed foods specifically in order to lower the amount of fat that's contained in it, thinking that that would be healthy for us. The problem is when you start interfering with natural foods, then you may overeat them and that may lead to obesity. Ultra processed foods soon became very popular because they had so many advantages over natural food. They're industrial, so they could be produced in bulk. They could be transported over long distances. They were cheap. They had a long shelf life. If they're packaged in a box, you could keep them for years at a time. They're convenient because you could just take them right from the package and eat them. They don't spoil. And the most important thing is they were profitable. Companies loved the profits that came along with it because you could upsell somebody on processed foods versus the natural foods. But what effect does eating all this unprocessed versus highly processed foods have on your weight? 
Recently, several studies have looked into this question and the answers are concerning to say the least. In this study, 20 adults were put in a metabolic lab and they were given meals that were matched for calories, energy density, macronutrients, sugar, salt, and fiber. The only difference was that one group had unprocessed foods or natural foods and one group had ultra processed foods and they could eat as much or as little as they want. And over a two week course, they would determine which one they ate more of. On average, it turns out that the ultra processed diet, people tended to eat 500 calories per day more, especially the processed carbohydrates and the fat. And over that two week period, you saw that it was correlated to an increasing weight. You can see the effect of eating the natural diet as much as they wanted was that people in two weeks would lose about one kilogram or almost two pounds compared to the ultra processed diet where they would gain approximately two pounds. This is especially concerning when you consider the amount of ultra processed foods that we're eating. A study from 2009 showed that the average diet is almost 58% composed of ultra processed foods. And more recent data looked at the diet of youths. In this study, they looked at how much ultra processed foods US youth were eating over the last 20 years. And over that period of time, you see that there's been a very steady increase, even amongst the very young, age two to five. In the older youth, by the time you get to 2017, 2018, upwards of 65 to 70% of all the calories that they were eating came from ultra processed sources. That's a real problem if their bodies simply don't know how to handle it and they're eating more than they should. When you break it down into more uh, foods that they're eating, you can see that certain foods have increased significantly over that period of time, whereas others have gone down. The industrial grain foods such as breads and biscuits and pancakes have remained fairly stable, but the biggest increase you see is in ready to heat and eat mixed dishes, particularly pizza and other things. So those easy to heat up microwave dinners and those uh, pizzas that you can just pop in the oven, that's what people are eating a lot of, as well as these sweet snacks and bakery products. They show a huge increase uh, from 1999 to 2017. On the other side, if you look at sugar sweetened beverage, the news is good. You people have been drinking significantly less sugar sweetened beverages as well as diet soft drinks, although fruit drinks have gone up. The problem overall though is that when you look at the total amount of unprocessed or minimally processed foods, it's gone from 28.8% in 1999 down to 23.5% whereas the ultra-processed group went up from 61.4 to 67%. So when we consider the effect of these ultra-processed foods and the fact that they're getting more and more prevalent, perhaps what we need to do is focus a little less on the specific mix of vegetarian versus meat or carbs versus proteins versus other things and focus just on eating natural foods. The key reason for these ultra processed foods is that they're so convenient. We're always eating on the run, there's no time to cook, nobody has time to go shopping and so on. So we naturally gravitate to these ultra processed foods which turn out to be highly processed and very profitable. So they get pushed onto us when we're busy going out to uh, do other things such as taking the kids to their program or working. Well, we think, well, we're going to get something to eat and maybe it's low fat or maybe it's low carb, but there's a processed food that's going to fit that bill. Don't make that mistake. Instead, maybe what you should do is say, hey, if you don't have time to eat, 
maybe don't eat. And that's where fasting is going to really help because then you can reduce the number of meals that you need to eat if you're following a specific diet and make sure that you're eating natural foods, that you have time to prepare at the time you need it. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something this week. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. They might learn something too. And if you could do me a favor and hit that like button so that other people can find this video, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much.